Konnichiwa, my name is Logan Charles Luna, and this video is about Castlevania. So it's not just going to be season one or season four Castlevania, it's going to be the whole series. And Castlevania is a Netflix anime. Uh, that means like Netflix paid for it, and it was made for Netflix. So it's not readily available like on a TV network or anything like that in the US at least. So Castlevania is based off of the video game series and if you played any of the video games you'll know that one of the main characters from the first video games was this guy Simon Belmont. So I really hope that in future installments of the series um, they get to the point with Simon Belmont and Cruz and all the other characters but as of right now the main focus is Trevor Belmont and Alucard and Cypher so let's begin with this review I guess season one of Castlevania takes place in Trevor's time period However, some events are different, of course, because it's like an anime. It's not directly going to be tied with the games. It's got its own uh, universe and rules and settings and timelines. Some of the characters are changed, not just by appearance, but their character. And unlike with most um, comics and mainly American and Western comics. Uh, it's not like a major shift or a big tonal change. A lot of the changes are made to just kind of mix things up. And because a lot of the show is taking story points and plots from the games in the canon series and there are winks and nods to some of the non-canonical games that are Castlevania and another universe yeah, the series gets kind of weird all over the place. Um, there's a point where the Belmonts are no longer the main focus or the family that fights Dracula and vampires. But the show focuses on Trevor, Alucard, Sypha, and their battle against Dracula. In season one, uh, Dracula's wife, uh, very much in the same vein of the games, is committed because of witchcraft and burned at the stake. Dracula vows to destroy all of humanity and begins with Targavishta, which is a city and a nation of feudal Europe in the 1500s, 1600s, I'm not sure. And now Trevor Belmont, who's been running in exile his entire life because the church opposes the Belmont family must now go to Targovishta and then later go to Dracula's castle to kill Dracula. Upon going to Targovishta he finds Sypha who is a speaker and she can do magic and stuff. Then they run into Alucard Alucard has a fight with Trevor to test to see if he can handle fighting Dracula. Trevor passes the test, and they go on their adventure to find and kill Dracula. Thus concludes Season 1. Uh, I believe Season 1 was only like four episodes. And it was released at around like October, Halloween time. Because, ooh, scary vampires. So now Season 2 mainly focuses on Dracula and his court and how he plans to eradicate all of humanity. And most of the vampires join Dracula because they think he's on a crusade to take over the world. They later find out it's somewhat of a suicide mission. So Dracula, his court conspires against him, their schemes, and Hector, one of the characters from the games, who was a forge master with Dracula, and in one of the games, Hector fights alongside Trevor 
and stops Isaac, one of the other Forge Masters, from resurrecting Dracula. However, in this version, Hector is tricked into betraying Dracula, and he generally feels remorse and regret once he does. Then he's taken by Carmela, and he is enslaved to be her Forge Master. Now that they've taken out some of the heavy hitters in the castle, Alucard, Trevor, and Sypha fight Dracula. They defeat Dracula, and in a very just sorrowful moment, Alucard is alone, and he breaks down and cries after having killed his father in his childhood bedroom. So now, Season 3 of Castlevania focuses on Sypha and Trevor's journey together. Sypha wants to rejoin her caravan, however she also wants to go on an adventure. And after adventuring for a while, they come across a town, they settle down in this town for a bit, they meet Saint Germain, who is an alchemist, and they learn about the Infinite Corridor and how a sub-faction of a church group plans to resurrect Dracula. Uh, this season takes a lot of its story from Symphony of the Night, which is a very highly regarded game in the franchise. However, you know, the characters are still Trevor, Sypha, and Alucard. While they're trying to stop this church and its cult leader from resurrecting Dracula, Alucard is training new vampire hunters that found him in the woods. Alucard is then later betrayed because the vampire hunters, you know, they want to live up to the moniker of vampire hunters and they kind of want to do Alucard a favor and put him out of his misery because Alucard is depressed. He doesn't know what to do with his life. It's even more sad when you realize that Alucard is immortal unless there's someone to take him out naturally you don't know how long Alucard's gonna live so that's weighed heavy upon him and he's even made dolls of Treva and Sypha that he talks to which really shows the deterioration of his mental state and so the two vampire hunters give him a fun night in the bedroom before they try and execute him. However, he turns the tables on them, kills them, and then he resorts to good old fashioned Vlad Tepish form of a keep out sign, which is impaling your enemies on stakes and putting them in your front door. Now, Alucard has a greater distrust of humanity and he is lonelier than he's ever been. So we go back to the town. Trevor and Sypha prevent the resurrection of Dracula. And St. Germain, or Germain, goes on to the Infinite Corridor to find the woman he loves. Now for season four. At the end of season three, there was a moment where Sypha doesn't know if she can keep going because it became less about fun adventures and it became more about tragedy, sorrow, death, loss. And Trevor says, we spent a while living your life. Now we're living my life because this is the life that Trevor knows. It's just sad. It's painful. It's miserable. And once again, people are trying to resurrect Dracula in season four. Trevor makes an offhand comment about it, how, you know, now he has to spend the rest of his life making sure people don't bring Dracula back to life. Alucard is once again given an opportunity to rejoin a group. Um, a writer is sent to, Dra to Dracula's castle that now belongs to Alucard. Alucard takes the note, he goes to the village, he helps them out, and he offers to give them sanctuary in his castle. There he comes across Germain. So Germain was in the Infinite Corridor. He tried to find the woman he loves, but he couldn't find her. 
Instead, he found another alchemist who agreed to show Germain a way to open and control the Infinite Corridor by bringing forth Dracula once again. Therefore, Germain needs Dracula's castle because that's where Dracula died in order to resurrect Dracula and bind the souls of Dracula and his wife together in a new body. This plan falls apart, and you find that one of the most annoying vampires of the series, and a total kiss-ass for Dracula, was actually a form of death. A spirit that feeds upon the death of all living things, and it was a ride-or-die for Dracula. So now, it wants to resurrect Dracula in order to feed, and feed on everything. It doesn't care that Dracula may not come back 100%, and that Dracula may just be, you know, this monstrosity. It just wants to eat. Because in very simple terms, death is also a vampire. So now we have the gang reunited through a magic mirror that they found in the catacombs of Targavishta. They join back in the castle and they go on a mission to, once again, prevent the resurrection of Dracula. So in the finale, Trevor goes up against death in a huge epic anime slash boss fight. Trevor does everything he can. There are many moments where Trevor probably will die. Um, he manages to makeshift a powerful weapon that he found in the catacombs. He defeats death, and then it's presumed that Trevor has perished. However, there is a glimpse of Germain using the key to open the infinite corridor. A few weeks pass. Meanwhile, while this was going on, over in Carmela's castle, uh, her council got split apart. Isaac came down and rained vengeance upon her. He forgave Hector. Hector aided in Isaac's revenge. Primarily because, you know, he still feels guilty about betraying Dracula. And Isaac kind of hit him with the, I don't want revenge against you. Besides, you're torturing yourself more than I ever could. So Hector just wants to stay in the castle with his vampire girlfriend. However, she no longer feels like she lost the will to live, classic Star Wars trope, and she wants to go see the sun one last time before she perishes away. And it's a sad moment. Hector loses what he thought was his way back you know, to kind of stabilize his mind. After all the betrayal, the enslavement, and all the other stuff. But, once again, Hector is now alone. Now, we cut back to the castle. Alucard has agreed to let people stay at the castle, and they're going to build a new town there. A town called Belmont. There is a headstone for Trevor since they couldn't find the body. Cypher reveals she's pregnant and that she'd like to raise her son in a town called Belmont. Then, a horse, which is like a running gag because this horse has just been showing up and bringing stuff to Alucard all throughout the series. So the horse shows up again, and this time the horse brings Trevor. And so everyone's happy, Trevor's back, he gets to help raise his son. And then Alucard kind of makes like a offhand remark that Trevor doesn't have that long to live because what he did came at a cost. So now the end of season four is Vlad Tepish and his wife checking into an inn and they're planning out the next step of their life. They don't know what's going on. They don't know how they got resurrected, but they're just going to lay low for a bit. And they're not planning on going back to the castle or mixing it up with Alucard or trying to reconcile. 
They just want him to figure it out for himself. All in all, Season 4 was a really solid installment in the Castlevania series. Um, it's probably one of the best shows on Netflix. Uh, this, Violet Evergarden, and some other shows, but I feel like that's more up to your taste of what you're into. But as far as animated series go, Castlevania is on top. And I know a lot of people are really on the hype train for Invincible. Invincible is great. It's got a great cast. The animation, the artwork, the fight scenes, the story by Robert Kirkman, it's all just really high tier and very high quality. But there's still a number of, not just anime, but like Castlevania, which is a Western production. There's a number of other animated series and animated films that will still give Invincible a run for its money. It was new, surprising, and shocking, primarily because we're just in this new trend of superhero wave in which superheroes are now more viewed as natural disasters and are kind of the replacement for what kaiju used to be back in the day, where kaiju were like this representation of man and science defying nature and it's a powerful natural disaster that's vengeful and it destroys because it destroys that's its nature and now superheroes are kind of taking that place where you have the viltrumites who conquer other planets in order to exert their dominance why are they doing this just to be the strongest there's no other reason they just want to be the strongest ones in all of existence because that's all they strive for and the fact that mark was able to stop one of the strongest viltrumites that really says something because he didn't just use like his might because to be honest he got his ass beat but before this turns into a invincible recap i just want to say i really like the show castlevania i hope there's a season five and rather than Christopher, I just wanted to focus on Simon Belmont. Can we just like time skip a little bit and go into the whole every hundred years when man forgets God, Dracula returns thing. And usually in the games, Alucard like takes a nap every time he kills his father. And sometimes he takes that nap for a little too long and then his father comes back and someone else has to take care of him. Every now and then he does join the fight. So I wonder how they're going to keep this going now that Alucard kind of just doesn't go back to sleep. He sticks around and he has agency and he wants to find a purpose. And I think that's very interesting. The writing is really solid in Castlevania. Yes, the final episode felt a little rush. It felt like it was just tying up loose ends and here's a little breadcrumb of setting up things for a possible fifth season of the show. Other than that, solid. This has been Logan Charles Luna. If you want to see this fan art finished, first of all, I don't know if I'm going to finish this in pencil or if I'm going to like do a fine line and then uh, with the Kurotake brush and then do some Spectrum Noir coloring like I usually do with most of my fan arts. I'll probably just have a poll like up on Instagram. So Twitter, Instagram, follow me at LCL x25 join the patreon if you want fan requested artwork in my style if you want to vote on fan art if you want to get behind the scenes on my manga that i'm creating um, model sheets storyboards final drafts so on and so forth then please do consider joining this has been logan charles luna sayonara